Hello, today we are gonna work on rubber de-icing boots. So aircraft have three main ways of protecting themselves against ice accumulation on the wings. There's these black rubber de-icing boots, sometimes neoprene. There's the polished aluminum heated leading edges like you see here, or on uh, like a Cirrus, you might see TKS panels, which have tiny little holes that weep out the icing fluid. Um, we're going to focus on the boots. These are common on things like TBMs, Meridians. Um, you'll also see them on like a Phenom or a Vision Jet. Those are silver. They're kind of a grayish silver color. This process is not made for those. Um, that process is just different enough where this doesn't really apply. Um, so this is for kind of black rubber neoprene type de-icing boots. So for supplies, we need applicators. We use the same ones for ceramic coating, spray bottle, some cleaner. We use release there, bucket full of warm water, microfiber towels. Um, we're using the Goodrich system, so we need Shine Master prep, and then Shine Master. There's a label on the Shine Master, and also a good idea to have some gloves. Before you start, inspect the boots for any pre-existing damage. Uh, you want to be on the lookout for any patches that might be on there or holes. So here's a little hole, and then this is a patch. Um, try not to scrub off any patches, so just be mindful of that and document everything. Our first step is to get the de-icing boot clean. Especially with turbo props, you're going to have a lot of exhaust on these. This is a jet, so we don't have that problem as much, but we still want to clean off any bugs or anything else that might be on there. First, I'm going to start with just a wet microfiber towel. I have a little bit of Release Ultra in that water. Um, for turbo prop, I would probably have some in a spray bottle and spray it on as well, but the main point here is to get it wet and start scrubbing. You notice this shiny area here. I did a little bit of um, sealant application there just to show you the next step that the prep solution removes old sealant. But more or less, you can see this step is relatively quick. Um, it helps that this jet doesn't have a lot of bugs on it right now, otherwise there would be more scrubbing. Also make sure to get the underside clean. And if you're worried about how, um, how good your coordination is, feel free to tape around the boots as well. I don't like taping around the boots because I I'm worried about it lifting off the paint, especially on older airplanes. That paint can be pretty fragile around the edges and I don't want my masking tape to pull that off. Now, after that first pass, I go back to the bucket with the towel, wring it out. Now I'm using it a little bit drier. So it was wet on the first step, now it's more dry. I'm using it more as a scrubbing towel to really get any bugs off. The first step hopefully loosens them up, second step removes them. With the bulk cleaning done, we can start the stripping process. So here is Shine Master Prep. It's going to have a strong ammonia smell. And here's that area that I put a little bit of sealant on already. So the ammonia will break down old sealant. So we're going to put that on there and make that disappear. But it also helps remove kind of the old um, dried off rubber. So look at how quickly that towel turns black. This is kind of a gel, so um, using just a microfiber towel. Microfiber towel is damp but not wet, um, it's also not dry. You can wipe this on and usually on the first pass I just try and get an even coating on there. The, these boots did not really have much for sealant on them, um, so it's really able to start working on the rubber right away. If there was sealant on there, you would probably have to apply it a little bit thicker um, just so it can eat through that old sealant first. So here's that area that we have the old sealant. You can see it's all but dissolved. Um, there's still a little bit of prep on the wing, but we're just gonna go right back over it, add a little bit more. But this time we're gonna put a little bit more pressure, a little bit more scrubbing action in there. Um, we really wanna get as much of that black stuff off of the boots before we start. So look at all the grime that came off of there. Just turn your towel to a clean section and then we can go do the other wing. If it's very hot, you want to work smaller sections. Um, this is in a hanger, so it's not super hot or cold. So we can just get the product on there, wipe it in. Um, if there was a lot of sealant on here, you definitely want to do this multiple times because it, it's only going to eat away so much sealant before it dries up. Make sure to focus on the edges of the boots. Um, that's usually where there's the least amount of rain abrasion, so that's where the most sealant usually stays. Um, usually, right, like right in the front of the wing, the rain will um, take most of the sealant off by itself. So you're gonna have to work a little bit harder on the edges. 
So after two passes of prep solution, we're gonna take a wet microfiber towel and we're gonna take off the prep solution along with everything else that it dissolved. So you see how my towel is getting black now. Um, ideally, by the time we're done with this, there's not a whole lot of grime coming off anymore. So for the first pass, I again like to just get it very wet, get all the easy stuff that wants to come off, off, then clean my towel and dry it off and then get back to kind of scrubbing more and try and remove that as much as possible. Depending on the condition of the boots, this usually takes one or two passes. So after that first pass, wash your towel. That water is very dirty, but mostly I just wanna make sure my towel is clean-ish looking so I can monitor and see how much grime is coming off. So on the second pass now that I'm wiping, let's see if that towel stays clean or if it's dirty. So you quick wipe on the whole wing. And sure enough, it's still dirty. So we're gonna keep scrubbing, try and get as little residue coming off as possible. So with a new clean towel, let's see how that looks. So you see how the top part of the towel is dirtier? It means I still have a bunch of residue left up here. So I'm gonna scrub a little bit harder right at the top. So this is what the surface should look like, nice and dull. Here I smudged on some sealant, so you can see that difference there. Um, in reality, it would look more like this. You see on the corner how it's still a little bit shiny. If you still see traces of old sealant, use more prep solution to dissolve that off. And you don't have to do the whole wing, just do the parts that have sealant left. So before we get the sealant on here, the Shine Master, um, I just wanna show you what we're gonna do. So. I like using these rectangular applicators instead of the round ones because this fits a lot better and the less passes we do on here the more efficient and the better it'll look too. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to strive to do this whole section of wing in one go. So we don't want to do this, stop, put more product on, start again. Every time you stop start like that you're gonna have high spots, so we wanna avoid that. The other thing, it's hard to do here, but we're gonna basically start, make sure my fingers are touching all the corners, so we're putting product down here, getting product evenly on there. Make sure we're curving to fit that radius. Um, but then, as we go, we wanna monitor and make sure we're getting product off. And we're gonna go, 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 go until we get to the end, and then we're gonna lift off. So again, we're gonna avoid stopping like that because it'll leave a high spot. When we get to stuff like this, usually what I like to do is just use my fingers to apply pressure where it needs to. Probably not going to get this on the first pass, and that's fine. Don't ruin the rest of it fixating on this little area here. Um, the next pass we do, we start on this side. So if this side got a little bit less product, it will even out because this the next pass will start up here and go thick and wet back that way. So let's put that all into practice. So to prime our applicator, we want to make sure to get product all around the edges. And then also inside, of course. And in the first one, I'm going to put a little bit more on just to make sure this gets primed. But basically, once I start moving, I really don't want to stop moving. So, I'm going to start up here. Make sure we got good contact. Nice conforming, right? Now we're going to push. I'm making sure by my left hand we are getting coverage. Making sure that the applicator is bent to the radius of the wing. Try and have a nice even speed throughout. This part gets interesting, so I'm gonna just lift up a little bit, push with my fingers to get that top edge, and when we get to the end, we're gonna lift off. This little, if we leave that, it's gonna dry like that. So I'm just gonna put kind of a motion on that, and then same thing here. That was kind of a rough start stop, so I'm gonna come down and then lift up again, just to even that out, okay? Let's not mess with that too much. While we have a nice wet edge here, we're going to reload the applicator. It looks like we picked up some dried up material there. 
Now this one's gonna be harder because we have more of a radius to deal with. So looking at where we stopped last time, we go, we'll actually go like this. Okay, and I'm conforming to that front edge. And I'm just gonna follow where we left off last time. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. So we have a little bit of overlap. Now we're gonna catch this on the bottom here in one motion off. So that looked a lot better because we didn't hit that speed bump. And here we don't have that same bunching up. So that looks good. Now we go back here. Put more product on. And now I want to make sure that my front edge kind of curves up. So we have overlap. And this is a good kind of duck walk here. You want to be able to see where you're going, but you also want to move and not start and stop. And when we get to the end, again, kind of lift off. Now, if you wanted to put a bunch of tape here to run over on the tape, you could. Um, if you do get excess product, you can use the prep solution to dissolve it back off. Okay, we got one more pass. We can go all the way to the edge here. So we got a ton of overlap on the right-hand side. And again, you want to do this right away because if you wait too long, it starts getting sticky. So if you're going to have overlap, Make sure it's either dry or wet, not in between. So we just got our first coat on this whole thing. Now we're gonna do the other side. By the time we come back here, we can start layering. Okay, so same thing. Make sure you get those edges. I'm using less product because I'm more primed on the pad. Let's start up here. And really just focus on my right hand side here Make sure I have good overlap with the edge. I don't care what the left hand side's doing because I'm going to make a new pass there anyway. I'd rather not miss a spot on the right hand side. Now we're coming up on that speed bump. I'm just going to go over the top side. So you see how we just steered up there. Um, then we'll get this on the next pass. Go back to this side. More product. And you can see this is pretty fast. Like you don't want to stop and think about this. Definitely just want to be prepared and ready to go. Okay, so here we go. Front edge. I don't feel like I should say this, but make sure you don't make contact with the wing while this is on there because it is sticky and it's not going to look good. Okay, that looks nice and smooth. That all looks good. Next pass. So we're gonna wrap around that front edge, make sure we have overlap in the front, and then we'll worry about the trailing edge where it hits the wing uh, later. So again, make sure we get contact with the right edge. As we finish the left wing, the right wing has had enough time to dry. So now we go back to the right wing and we start from the inboard section because the last time we started from the outboard section. I already did the top, so I'm just gonna show you the bottom of the right wing, but this is now the second coat. So now we're gonna focus on the right edge. Make sure we got that and off we go. So after we finish the second coat on the right wing, we do the second coat on the left wing, um, which we also start from the inside yeah. out. And then once both sides have their two coats, we do our final coat. So we are back from outboard to inboard. That's how you know it's the third pass. Generally, this is a little bit lighter pass. You go a little bit faster. We're just adding a little bit more thickness on there, making sure everything's even. Um, but if you did your first two passes pretty well, this last pass should be very easy. Thank you. 
It's harder going inboard because the wing gets lower and lower. So you gotta crouch down lower and lower as well. Now this is definitely the type of job where you have to resist the temptation to keep putting more and more coats on. Sure, it's gonna look shinier. It's gonna get like a thick candy gloss on it, but that's not actually good for the boots. These boots get inflated by air and they expand, so you don't wanna thicken them up with sealant. Also, the more sealant you put on, the more sealant you have to strip off next time. So stick to the recommended number of coats, which is three, and you shouldn't have any problems. So once this fully dries, it'll actually get a little bit shinier, but you can see this looks pretty good. So just to recap, first we wash the boots, get the bugs off in case of a turbo prop, get the exhaust off. Then we use the prep solution to dissolve any old sealant that may have been on there um, and also loosen up all that oxidized rubber. We got all that off and we did two rinses um, basically rinsing until my towel comes off clean. Not clean to like eat off of, but you don't want to see a lot of black transfer coming off of there. Then we did three coats of sealant. On the first pass, we started here, worked our way that way. Then we started that way, worked our way that way. And then we started this way, work our way that way. Again, don't overdo it. This is not the time to put seven coats of sealant on. It'll probably look really good, but it's not good for the plane. Hope this helped demystify the process. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe. We'll see you next time.